Hey everybody, it's the 80 Slasher Librarian. Exciting news, the Slash Tracks Network is on Cameo now. For $10, you can get a video from me, me and Alex, Master Evil, Freddy, even the Rodeo Clown from Slash Tracks. <laughs> We're looking forward to hearing from you. We can do a happy birthday video, advice, anniversary, just whatever you want us to say. Send us the money, we'll say the words, we'll have a good time doing it. Keep it scary, and pleasant dreams! So my renovation company closed, man. Before we start the show, I want to get that off my chest. Had it open two weeks. No business, no phone calls, no visits. Going to have to close it up. No way to pay the rent for the second month. Dream crushed. I didn't even know you had a renovation company, but that sucks, man. Yeah, it, it was bad. It was my fault. What, what happens, my fault. Um, I don't want to say it out loud. You're going to have to talk to our correspondent. He might tell you. Jumping Jeff Farmer, what, what the hell happened, man? Here's jumping Jeff Farmer. Destruction Unlimited. That's what he called himself, Destruction Unlimited. I've done a lot of things in my day. No one's ever done that. Uh, Destruction, that sounds like a really bad Road Warriors ripoff. That's I a just, terrible name. Yeah, in, in hindsight, for a renovation company, it sure is. Um, should I just give up on my dreams, jumping Jeff? Yep. Wow. Just start the show, man. Start the show. Good evening, Slashaholics, and welcome to episode number 27 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Josh, we're back in the Slash Tracks Action News studio, and we're bringing the Slashaholics a brand new, fresh to death episode of Slash Tracks News. Are you psyched? I'm psyched. I'm very psyched. Jumping Jeff Farmer, are you psyched? Yep. He's very excited. Psyched. He's a man of few words, dude. It's weird that it was recorded earlier, but you know what? I'm going to run with it. Yeah, it's almost as if we planned that and just inserted it whenever we want to use it. <laughs> um, okay. Josh, Josh, let's, uh, let's get into the meat and potatoes of the episode. Let's start out with nice comment of the week. Let's do it. All right. Funniest episode ever. And that's uh, referring to Slash Tracks Action News episode number 26. And that's from our friend, Koozie Keskin, 2676. Ooh, Thank I like you, that. Koozie. I love koozies, like the little things that go over your drink, keep them cold. Yeah, uh, hopefully he doesn't put a koozie on our show and keep our jokes cold. Oof, oof, yeah, we, oof. I we're, think I put a koozie on myself right there. That was kind of a dad joke. We're, hey, we're, we're done. Hey, you want to hear a dad joke? <laughs> Let's do it. What happened to the Ford Ranger that started to take yoga? Oh, shit, I don't know. Huh? What happened? It became a Ford Focus. And uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This has been Slash Tracks uh, Action News, episode 27. Uh, Why do those... Good night and a pleasant tomorrow. How come those two 40-year-old incels are telling dad jokes now? <laughs> hey, I've told dad jokes from day one, damn it. I know. So. I'm get, the older I get, the more I'm kind of sliding into it. Like, I'm just dipping my toes in the water of dad joked them. Oh, I, I've got one, but I'm going to save it for a special time on the show, unless I forget, because I am old as hell. So. Yeah, I, I'm starting to forget shit all the time. Thank God we have a handy-dandy rundown uh, <laughs> that's right in front of me. Josh, oh, yeah. by the way, thank you, Koozie. Great, great, nice comment. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for being part of the Slashaholics Nation. Josh, let's get into the mean comment of the oh, show boy. of the week. I'm going to go hide down here. You, you go ahead, and I'm going to hide. All right. Howling 3 riff, question mark. Freddy versus Ash, question mark. Did you forget about what made your channel? You started the book like a year ago, 
and haven't even explained to us why, exclamation point. Are you done with all that? Thumbs down on this until you start remembering what got you here. And that's from Talca Houser 5405 and that's regarding Slash Tracks Action News number 26. Josh, how do you feel about this uh, person's mean comment? What was the first part of it? Halloween 3? No, Howling 3 riff. So he's like basically asking us, like, where the hell is the Howling 3 riff? Where is the rest of Freddy versus Ash? Did you, are you too big time, Josh? Do you, did you forget about where you came from and what made the channel? No, I had these damn darn strokes and, and, uh, you know, a family member, a father passing away, father in law passing away. They, you know, depression, anxiety, that sort of thing. I know I'm being irresponsible. Uh, but anybody that's worried, besides this guy, I don't really care, um, I actually put out a new chapter of Freddy vs. Ash today. It's on the channel. It, it, we're recording this on a Monday. You're probably watching it on a Saturday. And you're Freddy like, hey, there's, there's no new episode of the, no new narration. It came out on Monday. But yes, there's new chapters. I'm not done putting out the book. I've had to slow down a little bit. Uh, but also, we've got a whole network here. We've got like several different shows we're putting on. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's over 60 completed audiobooks on the channel, so I've just slowed it down, but it's still coming. Um, I saw that comment the other day, and I just, I, it like, I wanted to be mad about it, but I, I stopped and thought about it for a moment, and I was almost flattered that he was that passionate about stuff that we do. You see um, it all. Yeah, it was like, wow, this guy really likes Slash Tracks, and this guy really likes the narrations. But at the same time, it's like, Homeboy could have went about it the, a totally different way. Yes. Um, so I can't be too mad at him. Uh, I appreciate his passion, and maybe next time uh, he come at us in a different way, maybe uh, write us at Slash Tracks 2020 at gmail.com and like just kind of air those grievances or maybe ask us uh, in a more polite way what's going on. And when he could expect the content that he really likes uh, yeah, to be and, coming up. And if he wants to really pick his content, you can go over to, like you saw at the beginning of the episode, go to Cameo.com, man. $10, and you can have me and Alex say whatever you want us to say. Mm -hmm. Anybody on the channel. Yeah. Uh, then you have Mother, nothing to complain about, right? Mother Evil, Rodeo Clown, Master yeah. Evil, me, Josh, me and Josh, me and Mother Evil, me and Master Evil, whatever. 10 bucks, it'll get Bloody. you a Sean, Freddy? Yeah, Freddy, yes. Jeff and Jeff Farmer, anybody. Yep. Um, Josh, since we're uh, kind of plugging uh, channel business, why don't you hit him with the Patreon? Okay. Uh, first off, it's cameo.com forward slash slash tracks network. Just like that, all together, lowercase. Uh, our Patreon is www.patreon.com forward slash 80 slasher librarian. And uh, that link should be on the screen. And it'll be on there throughout the episode. You can sign up for as low as a dollar a month. Support the channel. Help us go and grow for years to come. And higher donations, $50. You get to pick an episode of any show. You can also go to paypal.com. And our PayPal email is daylighter07 at yahoo.com. It's in the description. And you can drop a tip anytime. So what's the email where if people want to write us? Oh, uh, slash tracks 2020 at gmail.com. And you can go ahead, uh, go ahead and send us emails, uh, or just, you know, whatever. You want to talk about something, you have a question for us, uh, you'd like some advice, uh, perhaps Dear Slashy, you could be featured in a future episode. Um, would you rather, you could ask us a, like a would you rather question, uh, you could be featured in a future episode. You could, uh, if you're a company and you like what you see, and you'd like to partner up with us and take on Destruction Incorporated in the future, and you want us to shill your stuff, and, and team up for the <laughs> shilling championship of the world, slash tracks 2020 gmail.com. And if you just want to talk to us in general, uh, Josh and I are usually available to write you back. And uh, we can just BS. Uh, we're, we're pretty open. All right, Josh, so, enough, of, <laughs> enough of the business. Let's slide right into fun facts, DMs, real quick. All right. Josh, airplane mm -hmm. pilots and co-pilots, they consume different meals to avoid simultaneous food poisoning. That's good thinking, actually. That's very smart. I'm actually comforted knowing that they do that. <laughs> yeah, well, did, you never you never put two and two together that me and you also eat different meals, so in case one of us drops dead that the show can continue, Wait, we do you, the same thing. You get full meals? You don't just get, like, the little packet of, like, bland 
uh, paste or whatever from, from Master Evil? I don't get anything during Slash Tracks, but during the podcast, I, I do get to eat. Okay, okay. Yeah. I haven't yet, so. Like, my, my tube of food just says Gruel 1, uh, so I would assume that your tube of uh, Gruel would be Gruel 2. It's actually David Gruel. Uh, he actually manufactures the paste that we eat. Is uh, It's not actual Gruel. It's made by him. That's the brand. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah. What kind of slop is your favorite slop that Master Evil sends us pre-show? Um, not so shitty movies. Yeah. Not, j- well, movie <laughs> reviews that aren't uh, just us bashing it the entire time, like maybe a movie we actually enjoy. Uh, right. Speaking of a movie review, uh, I want to segue like for two seconds. I want to rev- I, I don't want to riff this movie, but I know that you've wanted to riff it for quite some time. Can we review Return to Oz? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I might, right. I might do a few little riff jokes throughout it. That'd be fun. But yeah. Oh, you might, huh? Might. Jumping Jeff Farmer. Uh, is Josh going to riff Return to Oz with or without me during the review? Yep. Okay. See, I'm telling you, I can't avoid it. It's gonna it, if I have to rewatch it to review it, I'm gonna have a few little smart ass comments to make. Okay. And uh, like my family, Chris says, it's better to be a smart ass than a dumb ass. So there you go. Damn, you have a family crest. Uh, no, I just made it myself. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have a coat of arms and stuff. Uh, I have a uh, coat made out of arms. Uh, I kind of misunderstood that. I thought it was coat of arms. You um, have a coat that includes arms <laughs> to, to put your arms in. Like, yeah, sleeve. I. Uh, you mean sleeve? Yeah. Yes, not. Re- yeah, I definitely don't mean real arms. Okay. Uh, definitely not. So. Okay. So what's the next fun fact? Besides, well, I was gonna say, Josh. Uh, due to several reasons, including mismanagement, faulty equipment, and family issues, most of the initial humans who were cryogenically frozen eventually ended up decomposing. I can see that. What about um, Walt Disney's head? Is it still frozen or is it decomposing? He's got, well, I don't know. They didn't really speak to Walt Disney or Ted Williams or any of that, but Walt Disney was probably one of the first to be wait, cryogenically frozen. Wait, Jason Voorhees is, is cryogenically frozen? He was in Jason X, but... Oh, no, he, no, I thought, I thought you said Ted White, the guy that played him. <laughs> Ted White, R.I.P. Ted White. Uh, Ted White just died at the age of like 109 uh, earlier this year. Didn't Ted White just recently pass away? I think so. I thought you said he was cryogenically frozen and thawed out, though. No, Ted Williams, the baseball Ted Williams. player. Okay, baseball. A baseball player froze himself? Really? His family froze him. His head, not his body, his head. Why yeah. are people freezing the heads? Do they I think don't... That... Consci- probably because of consciousness, because consciousness, of the brain. Um, and they no, probably I... saved money, probably, by yeah. not doing the whole body. Yeah, the brain is probably like... You know, you take our skin and everything off, and you got, like, the eyes and the brain and the spine. It's, we're probably, you know, like aliens or something. And all this is just stuff we've added over the years. So, yeah, take the head off, freeze it. If it makes you feel better, uh, maybe the alien technology will bring it back in the future, and you'll have a head to talk to. Um, so, sure. Or, or, what if these companies team up with Chat GPT and the people aren't actually, like, brought back to life because you can't do that? And they just use the head as like a, a like an empty husk or an empty shell, and just insert Chat GPT, and it looks like the person's alive. Yeah, let's again. let's not make evil AI robots. Let's make evil AI people with <laughs> flesh. You know, the the brain is a supercomputer, so maybe in the future they'll be able to jack into a brain, and you'll be able to communicate with the person if they keep e- the brain frozen. Evil. Uh, decapitated Hmm. AI Terminators versus nuclear grizzlies. I'm going with the AI every time, man. I see all these AI, like, fake commercials and stuff. There's these funny ones called Planet Mountain Dew and Planet Dr. Pepper. But the thing is, the people in these AI-generated things, they look like Uncanny Valley. Like, Mm -hmm. it's not quite human. It's like their clothing is like an extension of their skin. It's like Mm -hmm. nightmares. It's the way nightmares work. I swear. They don't... Uh, they look like Katy Perry when she got her eyelash stuck at the concert. And no nipples. They have no belly buttons. Like if you ever see like a shirtless one, like a guy or whatever on there. And it's just so freaky, man. AI, the people freak me out because I have nightmares of things that look like that. But yeah, every every 
um, not everyone, but most of them, when they just make like a funny commercial for a fake fast food or a fake movie, uh, it always ends up ending with the AI writing the scripts into like world domination or something. Like it happens Taking so many over. times. Yeah. And it's like, that people, we got one job and like it's like right in front of us. We can, y'all see this, right? No, we're going to all die slowly. Okay, AI is going to get us. It's Nobody's paying attention now. It's like the Matrix. We're just going to be human batteries at some point. They're just going to be using our energy to generate their own, uh, you know, s source of fuel, like from our babies. And our. That's why they're chopping the heads off and freezing them, because they're the AI created, they need the heads to power the AI uh, non-nippled bodies in the future, I think. Oh, or they get in the future and these families are like, oh, we can finally, you know, get our family members back. And they're like, oh, actually, the head's no good. We need to lower it from like here down. Did y'all freeze that? No, no. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's in a landfill somewhere in San Jose. Uh, I was going to say they better be all these people that initially were cryogenically frozen. I hope the families save the receipt. Because they got fucked. Uh, are they, they going to get an exchange, Alex? <laughs> or a well, refund? Or what are we talking about? Yeah, I'm unsatisfied with this purchase. Uh, <laughs> the head that I wanted cryogenically frozen has decomposed and is done for. Do you um, think Ocean Gate is giving refunds right now? Or is that oh, going to go somewhere man, else? Man, <laughs> too soon. Too soon. Um, I, oh, my God. that we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But that Ocean Gate thing, they're like, oh, yeah, they're down there with X amount of oxygen. They're just dying. And, like, meanwhile, what actually happened was, like, the U.S. Navy picked up the explosion, like, the implosion immediately on their sonar. And there's actually some weird stuff about it that I do want to dis discuss in the future, maybe on, like, a Halloween episode or something. Because there's a yeah. lot of stories of, like, how that, like, the Titanic wreck is haunted and stuff like that. And some weird stuff happened the day they imploded. And some weird stuff happened on some other trips they did. So, yeah, I want to talk about that in the future. But the, the crazy thing is, rest in peace to the family, especially that 19-year-old that was forced to go. But I'm just saying, it's kind of crazy to live at a time when the Titanic claimed five more victims. That's just crazy to me. That's just that is that is crazy. Eleven years later. Yeah. So, are you blaming Titanic or are you blaming PlayStation for them using a PlayStation controller to control the I don't think the, the controller. Summer? I think people are just focusing focusing on that because it sounds crazy, but the tech is actually legit. A lot of places use stuff like that for different things, even crazy stuff like this. Like, but I do believe it was the Titanic, and I'll go into that. Like I said, on like a Halloween thing, you got to get some creepy music and ambience going, and I got I got some theories. I got some. You theories. don't oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we get, finish, fun facts. You don't you don't think it's the fact that he was like, I'm a maverick. I'm like Elon Musk of the sea. Oh, I'm no, this... I believe that made it very easy for for what I believe happened to happen. If he if he wasn't so cocky and had better equipment, I think it would have been harder to pull off. But I think he made it easy. And I well, think it has to do with respecting the wreck. James Cameron has gone down there 33 times. Yeah. But he's, he, he was going down there to, like, really preserve it and to really respect the history. This guy's taking $250,000 from people, taking them on a weekend warrior excursion. Hey, look at that cool thing from the past, you know? We're rich people that can do whatever we want. Look at that. I think in the spiritual world, they can sense that sort of thing. And the owner of Ocean Gate's wife, her grandparents, or great-grandparents, died on the Titanic, or were on the Titanic. I'm sorry, I don't I think they died on it too, so. Okay. I've got some theories, you know, I've gone off on a tangent, we can, you know, swing back, but. Okay, yeah. I, before we get into the next fun fact, I just wanna say one thing about that. I'm just excited because one time I was flipping through Tubi's horror selections and there was a Titanic 2. I and wasn't aware. Titanic 666? <laughs> yeah, there was a Titanic part two. And uh, I remember thinking like, well, what the hell is this gonna be about? Cause the, it's, you know, whatever, Titanic gone. And then it's like, okay, well, now we could actually have a Titanic 2, right? Yeah, yeah, we could, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I've actually got, I've got an idea for a, a horror movie about going down there to the wreck like they did, you know? So, yeah, it, it, it's gonna, it would be like a very claustrophobic horror movie, like a buried yeah. alive type thing with, with some jump scares. But the time's not right. I mean, I am not trying to be disrespectful. People did die. Um, it's just, it's just insane that the titanic 111 years later and i'll move on after this has claimed five more people that that's just it's history we, we witnessed something crazy yeah it was it was it was irresponsible 
we need to leave it alone. I really believe that. You know, let let them rest. Um, but it's it's just a, it's just, it's a crazy time. It's a crazy thing to think of. But uh, yeah, fun facts. Well, it's 100% first world problems. Uh, let's go down in the submarine that we created with our extra billions of dollars and have it explode. Uh, Josh, in 2013, India's army spent six months watching what they thought were Chinese spy drones violating the, its airspace, only to find out that the drones weren't actually drones, but they were actually Jupiter and Venus. The gods and goddess? The no, planets? I, from the Roman? No. No, they thought they were drones, but it was just like, no, that's just planets. Like that that's that's cute. That's cute. That's, that's not even funny. That's just cute. It's cute. They're staring at they're, they're studying these drones. <laughs> and somebody and just see somebody coming in for shift change one day or something, be like, So it's my first day. What what am I gonna be doing? You're gonna be watching these drones. <laughs> Dude, that's that's yeah, are y'all kidding? Are y'all hazing me because it's my first day? You, you know that Jeff and Jeff Farmer, you know that's not drones, right? Yep. All right, man. Last fun fact of the episode. In 2010, Jim Hesseldine, the owner of the company that makes Segways, died after riding one of the scooters off a cliff and into a river uh, near his estate. So the guy who uh, owned the company that created Segways died on a Segway uh, by plunging over a cliff 30 feet to his death. It was intentional. He he had this dream. He had this dream to build, to build this thing, this machine that would help mankind, you know. And he's like, I'm gonna be okay as long as it doesn't become something that mostly douchebags drive. And then the sandal wearing people with socks on and sandals, douchebags driving the segways. He saw it. He couldn't handle it. He created a monster. Took the segway out with him. He couldn't live with himself, so he's like, I'm going to have the ultimate bad PR. I am going to, I'm going to die on my sword, but in this case, it was die on his Segway. Die on his Segway. He, he didn't fall on his sword. He fell on his Segway. On his segway. <laughs> All right, Josh, and from that Segway, we're going to Segway right into Would You Rather. We got one? We got one this week. We got one! All right, so uh, this is from Mahar Maharam Gummis, 4382. And Maharam asks us, would you rather come to the ring like Sting or the American Badass Undertaker? Which Sting. entrance would you rather have? Sting wow, you okay. Okay, go S ahead. Sting because uh, the Hulk Hogan thing that happened with the motorcycle. There's just too many, like... You know, I with the Sting thing, I would make sure that they had uh, the the harness for an adult. You know, I would like double check everything myself. But the the motorcycle, there's too many things that can go wrong. You know, and it'd be just super embarrassing to have what happened to Hollywood Hogan happen to me, <laughs> where the bike I, won't start. <laughs> I don't like. I like the question, but I don't really like either one of the entrances. To be honest with you, I don't like anything zipline related. Um, I think the sting entrance that I like the most was when he was like in the balconies kind of just watching and then he would like almost make his way via like the shield through the crowd. Yeah. I kind of like that entrance where he's got the bat and he's got the trench coat and he's kind of making his way down through the crowd. I like the shields entrance through the crowd, ultimate warrior running to the ring. Um, taker. Well, you're well. Yeah. Taker hundred percent. Correct. The motorcycle. Although he never screwed it up, Hogan absolutely couldn't start the bike, and it looked ridiculous and sloppy because he's like trying to chase Undertaker <laughs> he's off. Gone. He's already in another county. By the yeah, time he's he already he's out of the building, man. He's in the he's in his rental car on the way to room service. Uh, yeah, that was ridiculous. And also, I, I I don't like to bring up the harness thing, but like Owen Hart had the quick release. Yeah, I watched thing. that stuff that night. That was crazy. It led to his death. And whenever I see or hear anything that has to do with, like, a harness, I'm just like, um, no, that's a no for me. I've got a caveat for it. What if we, instead of going with the Sting entrance, because it is blatantly Blue Blazer area, and we go mm -hmm. with something a little bit safer than that, and we do the Shawn Michaels WrestleMania, the Iron Man match entrance? Zipline? Where it's just a plain zipline like you would do on vacation, 
you know, I, I think that would be a fun entrance for like a big show, like a big pay per view. I made a zipline entrance at Woodleaf, which was a Christian summer camp. Uh, this the summer of my senior year that I graduated from high school. I went. I was very heavy. It's no secret that I used to be really heavy, and like I was on the zipline. It's heavy, Doc. Dude, I'm going down the zip line, Josh, and I like turned backwards. So I'm not going forwards anymore. I like the just the speed and everything turned me backwards. I've got my shorts on. I hit the water, rips my shorts right off me. Oh no. Uh I had to like swim to get my shorts in the middle of the lake. Uh, meanwhile, I'm overweight. I'm self-conscious. This is terrible. I've got to get my shorts on while I'm trying to like flow and not let anyone <laughs> know. Yeah, so when I hear Zipline, I just immediately think of my shorts being ripped off at summer camp. Well, you would have wrestling tights, but yeah, I understand, man. I get that, traumatizing things. Um, Tonight on the wrestling discussion, be sure to ask me about what I said when I was asked. I was actually invited to go work on a wrestling show this summer. So Really? Like like monthly. Um, But we'll get into that. If if you'll bring it up, I'll I'll give you the the insight on it. Okay. Hey, you like that? You like the new slasher shirt? You damn right I do. Rockin' Halloween Two, the best oh, yeah. Halloween sequel. The best Under Halloween. underrated Halloween sequel for sure. Um, it gets a lot of shit because they're in the hospital the entire movie, but it's pretty good. Halloween kills. Halloween kills are in the hospital for like a third of it. Yeah, I, I, I listen. I don't care about. As well. I don't care about where the movie is set and i and that goes for any movie as long as the movie has good writing and good acting and good scenes it's like whatever i'm fine but that was that was that was a good question um i just i don't know i agree with alex the the motorcycle thing and the other one being kind of you know after what happened to owen but i think i I would i if if you if you allow me that caveat then i would say zipline like Shawn michaels that's yeah i'm gonna pick c if I had if I had to choose between these two, since I don't know how to ride a motorcycle, and I don't, and the thing reminds me way too much of the Blue Blazer, we're going Shawn Michaels zipline, hundred percent, lock it in. There we go. There we go. And if you uh, want to ask got, us a question, uh, send oh, it to yeah, Slash Twenty yeah. Twenty for sure. Sorry, I, I cut you off. Yep, absolutely, do that. <laughs> Josh, let's get into sports. All right, Josh. Hey. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, you're like, I'd rather ride a zip line than get into sports right now. All right, Josh. Hall of Fame boxer, Sugar Ray Robinson. Now, he was like a middleweight um, boxer. And if you might not know anything about boxing, but I'm sure you've heard of Sugar Ray Robinson, possibly. Is it not Sugar uh, Ray Leonard? He's pre-Sugar Ray Leonard. Oh, okay. He's okay. the original Sugar Ray. Uh, Sugar Ray Robinson had like 100 wins. He back Tell in the that day, to Mark. Or, is that his name, Mark? Mark. Uh, Mark. Uh, Raff. Yeah. He's like on E now, or he's like on uh, ET or something. But anyway, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson back in his day in the 50s had like 100 wins. He was a great boxer, multiple time champion, whatever. He backed out of a fight one time, Josh, because he had a dream that he was going to kill his opponent in the upcoming match uh, in the ring. So he was so disturbed by this that he actually backed out of the fight. And he talked to a priest and a minister about this dream. And they convinced him that it was just a dream. It's just his nerves, whatever. So Robinson decided to do the fight. He goes into the fight and he fights the guy, Jimmy Doyle, and he killed Jimmy Doyle in the ring. So I think it might have been a self-fulfilling prophecy hearing you say that. I think he might have got his head so worked up about not letting this guy get killed in the match that he ended up killing the guy in the match. I'm not saying he did it maliciously or even consciously, but... After all that stress and everything, canceling it, rescheduling it, so worried this whole every night worried he's gonna kill this guy. I mm-hmm. almost feel like he willed it into existence. Like when I hear you tell that story. I got kind of a creepy vibe from that. Well so. maybe maybe he had like so much trepidation and so much anxiety and so many like so much built up nerves about it that he was because you know like when you're scared or something, your muscles tighten and you get like super fast and like super strong. Yeah. Maybe that's what happened. Like his punches had a little bit more. Adrenaline, yeah. 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 The adrenaline was just like for real that night. I don't know. Did Doyle have like a thing written out to have his head frozen? (laughs) I don't know. And if they did, why would they freeze a head that is, first of all, died in the ring and is probably just filled with CTE? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
Like all, like all, like uh, Lipton iced tea commercial, like with the claymation. His head okay. wakes up, dude. His head wakes up. They unfreeze him, and he thinks he's still in the fight. Like he's trying to get off the canvas. You know, it's seventy, eighty years later. Hey, before we move past uh, boxing, uh, since I said I'm gonna do a little video game intro every time, a little thing. Uh, my my news tonight is Punch Out is coming back. Uh, for the first time since like 2011, I think 2009, they had one for the Wii. New Punch mm-hmm. Out coming. I really hope it's got Mike Tyson in there, just for old times' sake. That would be great. Yeah, I think you know what they re- the reason they took Mike out of the Punch Out series was because of the rape situation. Oh yeah, yeah. Never mind. I guess they're not going to forget. No, that, <laughs> well, I was going to say, I was going to say, it's been like over 20 years, and Mike Tyson's completely rejuvenated his public image. Yeah. So. You could see Mike Tyson in it, to be honest with you. If you don't know about this already, folks, and you want to see an interesting story, if you grew up in the 80s, 90s, or if you just like retro games and played Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, uh, look, if you if you play on an emulator or can find old cartridges, find a game called, uh, let's see here, it's called um, Power Punch 2. And it's actually Mike Tyson's Punch-Out Part 2. It was going to be Mike Tyson doing Punch-Out in space against aliens and stuff, but because of the rape scandal and everything they had to they didn't want to cancel the whole game because they already had it made so they just replaced mike tyson with like a generic boxer but yes power punch two uh there is no power punch one it's punch out uh check it out that is actually mike tyson's punch out part two uh for real no joke well josh that's great that nintendo actually decided to go a step you know a different direction with that because just imagine all the aliens that they saved from being raped Oh, my God. Dude, I just had to read Freddy Krueger possessing a body and raping somebody in a book. The first time in any of the narrations I've done out of 60-plus books, I had to narrate a Freddy Krueger cringy rape scene. That was that was too much. That was too much. I just think that, like, you know, I just think Nintendo did a really good thing by not letting Mike Tyson go to space because they saved a <laughs> lot of aliens. A lot oh, of God, the, Vulc- the Vulcans, man, they would be scared shitless of Mike Tyson. Aren't they the ones with the pointy ears, or is that something else? <laughs> what does this mean? What the hell does this mean? Dude, you're being ludicrous. Get over here so I can have my way with you. You gotta do this. <laughs> hey, Josh. Uh, Lawrence Taylor, who main evented WrestleMania 11 with Bam Bam Bigelow, maybe that's how you know him, uh, former New York Giant legend football player he's in the water boy he says don't do crack to adam sandler okay lawrence taylor is not just a former defensive player of the year mvp candidate uh just amazing people consider lawrence taylor to be the best defensive player in the history of the nfl a lot of people consider him to be that good me and larry Um, t go way back yeah lt uh larry t yeah larry oh terry terry t larry t oh okay um, Lawrence Taylor, Josh, just just recently said that he doesn't remember being drafted by the New York Giants because that day he consumed 41 Coors Lights. Okay. And uh, the next day he had his kidney transplant, right? No, he was good to go, man. Uh, back in the old days, back in the 80s. Uh, the NFL draft was not really, te- I don't even think it was televised. I think that they found out they were drafted by a phone call. <laughs> so Yeah, I do. And now the NFL makes big money by the presentation of the draft. It's like a, an event. It's like a red carpet deal. But back then, if you got drafted, you'd get a nondescript phone call. There's no caller ID. It's like, oh, the Giants are on the phone, Lawrence. And he's like, what? I just drank, you know, fucking 41 <laughs> Coors Lights. Like, what What do they want? Uh if Vince McMahon's on the phone, LT, he wants you to wrestle Bam Bam Bigelow. Oh, my God. Okay, uh, last sports story of the episode, Josh. You ready? Yeah, but we've got to talk about how crazy the draft is for pro wrestling later. But let's hear the last sports story. Okay, La- last sports story. Okay, former Ohio State star quarterback, and uh, Cardell Jones. He used to play for Ohio, the Ohio State Buckeyes in, like, the 2014, 2015 seasons. Uh, they went to the national championship with him. They were really good. Uh, there was a kid. It was like a make-a-wish situation. And this kid's 
wish was to play Cardell Jones uh, in some video games. So Cardell Jones showed up to the hospital with his uh, video game system, and they played NCAA football. Um, well, Cardell Jones proceeded to beat this kid 91 to 35 in a game of NCAA football. He let the, he beat the kid. Not just he didn't just beat him. He beat him ninety one to thirty five. Was he like saying in your face, kid? <laughs> I don't like, know. <laughs> I just like the image of like, hey, you know, hey, Billy Cardell Jones from the Ohio State Buckeyes is here to like brighten your day. It's like, oh boy, oh goody, uh, and he's got the PlayStation or whatever in his hand. They hook it up and. An hour later, you know, the score, 91-35, and Cardell Jones is, like, <laughs> riding the bull. Doing you know, all doing the bull like, dance. dances and stuff. And, yeah. uh, you know, later he's all like, you know what? I, I went there to do the right thing. I tried to lose the game, but that kid sucks. Yeah, he's That terrible. kid cannot play a video game to cure his disease. Like, <laughs> he is so bad at games. So bad. Sorry, it's like kid. He- it's like the kid's head wasn't even in the game. It's like he was focused on other things. Like he was worried yeah. about other things than the actual score. Like his head was in a cryogenic freezer or something, you know? Like <laughs> is... The idea of the boxer that where you ask me if they froze Sugar Ray Robinson's opponent's head, it's like, because he died in the ring. So he died probably with his last image of like getting hit, right? So if they did wake him up, he'd probably be he would wake up thinking he was still in the fight, right? Yeah, yeah. That was just yeah. so funny to me. Um, that would be crazy to see that play out. It's like his head, like huh? Like he wouldn't be able to get off the canvas though. He's just a head at this point. Head he can't, dude. He could never lose a wrestling match though because he doesn't have any shoulders. You, his shoulders would never be pinned to the mat. He could say I quit though. No, he has no. Uh, like it wouldn't work, so they just put the mic up to his head, like when Bret Hart wrestled Bob Backlund. It's like, do you quit? Do you quit, you son of a bitch? And he's like, do you remember that when Roddy Piper was the ref at like WrestleMania 11? The yeah, and Bruce match. or some, uh, Owen got uh, the mom to throw the towel in. Yeah, Owen got Helen Hart to throw the towel in the ring, and that's how. Uh, I think that's how. Wait a minute. I, I don't know if did he lose that's how Bob the belt? Backlund won the belt. Yeah, that's when he that's when Bob Backlund won the belt was with the towel because he carried okay. a towel around after that and did a whole thing with it. Um, but what's crazy about that? We're talking about like the I Quit match and everything. I remember The Rock versus uh, Mankind, and I might be misremembering this, but I remember like you could tell his mouth wasn't moving, so people were like theorizing it was like a storyline where The Rock had had like a tape play or something. But, like, they never followed through on it. Like, who set up the tape? When did they know to hit play? Why didn't they just do it the first time The Rock put Mankind in a submission hold? You know, if he's going to use a tape of Mankind saying, I quit or whatever, and fake it, why not do it, like, right away? You know? Like, that never made sense to me. (laughs) That was the empty arena match, I believe, during the Super Bowl. Um, It was, Uh like, during the Super Bowl halftime, wasn't it? No, that's the one where Mankind or whatever, or The Rock won by putting a forklift down on Mankind. Okay. Uh, this one was, like, after that, their rematch, I believe. And yeah. it was an I Quit match. Like, he put the microphone to Mankind, my, Mankind's face. I sound like a hick right there. Uh, Mankind's face. He says, I quit, I quit. But it was obviously a recording of Mankind saying I quit from a promo. It sounded uh, like Mankind It sounded like Mankind was squealing. I remember, I quit, I quit. He wasn't moving. Like, his mouth wasn't moving. They never followed that up, like, on Raw or anything. Like, it was, was really weird. Really I thought weird. it was the, I thought it was Vince screwing over Mankind and making The Rock the corporate champion. Wasn't that it? I think it? so, but I just, I don't think they made it very clear, is what I'm saying. Like, it was kind of okay. muddled, so. Oh, so you're saying that WWF uh, writing sometimes isn't clear and can be confusing. Ex- sometimes. Okay. I mean, just ask Jump and Jeff Farmer if if WWF is confusing and muddled sometimes. Are they? Yep. There you go. You don't need to ask anybody else. The man himself said it. What the hell would Jumping Jeff Farmer know about WWF writing? Was he ever in the WWF? Technically, kind of, but like it's a touchy subject. We can't really talk about Sting. You know, we talked about okay. that. He he was the fake Sting, but he thinks he's yeah. the real Sting. Like yeah. you know, yeah. So if okay. I was like. 
hey, are you the real Sting? He'd go, yep. But yeah. Okay. Uh, speaking of wrestling, let's get into wrestling. Let's do it. All right, man. Uh, Jesse the Body Ventura just turned 72 years old yesterday. Wow. Jesse the the Body Ache Ventura. That two years old. You know, he's he's. I think he's actually 74, and this is just some big conspiracy. That's what I think. I think he didn't celebrate his 72nd birthday, Alex. I think he celebrated yeah, yeah. the 50th anniversary of his 22nd birthday. That's what I think you, happened. You mean to tell me, you mean to tell me that it's my 72nd birthday? Is, are you trying to tell me the body? <laughs> uh, Jesse the body. I got a couple, couple quick things about Jesse the body. Great Jesse Ventura story on the set of Predator. Arnold had set up a full weightlifting station on the set, it, like in the jungle or wherever they were filming. Yeah. And Arnold was known to like get to the weightlifting area at like 6 a.m. and do his workout and be ready to film at like 7, so he'd do like 6 to 7. Well, Jesse the Body would like show up at 5 a.m. to beat Arnold there. But Jesse wouldn't actually be working out. He would just show up, do some quick reps of something, get kind of a slight pump. And I'm talking like slight pump. He's doing like 10 reps. Oh, Spray okay. himself down with a water bottle. Looks like he's sweating to impress Arnold. But he didn't actually do the workout. It's totally fibbing. And Arnold's like, look at the body. The body has already been here before me. He's really he's going for it. He really wants to pump, you know. <laughs> so the body pulled a fast one on uh, Arnold. He's a very smart man. I will give him that. Ventura is not a dumb man. And... Uh... You're not gonna you're not gonna fool him, but he's definitely gonna have an upper hand on fooling you, I believe. So not Jesse, you, but you like Josh, that. Jesse the body, uh, before we move into the next wrestling story, he professional wrestler, very successful at it. Uh, commentator, very successful at it. Navy SEAL. Okay, not a lot of people can be a Navy SEAL. Um, and he became the governor of Minnesota. Yeah. So basically he sure and he also here's one other thing he did. He successfully took Vince McMahon to court uh, to secure royalties for VHS and other promotional items. And he had the foresight to know that uh, home media would change. And he actually put it in, the, in his like the contract where you're talking about getting the rights and everything, getting mm -hmm. royalties. He put in there not just the videotapes, like any, 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 any uh, sales, anything like that, pay-per-view of anything he was in. He had the foresight to know that it wouldn't always be tapes, you know, so he made sure to include any type of physical media, any type of digital media. So yeah. way ahead of his time on that. So he also tried to get a union for the wrestlers in WWF. So that's an yeah. interesting story. Hulk Hogan shit all over that because Hulk oh, yeah. Hogan didn't want a union because he was making bank. According to the body and the body does have a little bit of a chip on his shoulder about Hogan. So I, I take it. I, I don't take it at full face value, but I do believe it's possible. And uh, Josh, uh, the next wrestling story is something that's near and dear to your heart because it's WCW. Yep. Uh, on July 31st, 2000, so almost 23 years ago, so the, the anniversary is coming up on July 31st, Shane Douglas and Billy Kidman feuded over Tori Wilson in a Viagra on a pole match. Um, did you watch that match, Josh? I don't want to answer that, and I don't want to cut to our correspondent to answer it for me, but just just imagine if you did cut to him and ask him what he said. Yeah, I saw it. It's, oh, well, my God. Um, At least the Viagra didn't fall out of the bottom of the jar, like yeah. when the belt fell out of the bottom of the box, because I, I don't know, man. Vince Russo, part of me believes, to my dying day, part of, part of me, not all of me, so don't call me crazy, Alex, part of me will always believe that A, the only real screw job that ever happened at WrestleMania was between the Spider Lady and uh, uh, Rock and Robin or whoever it was that was the champion at the time. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy Richter. Wendy, Rick, Wendy Richter and the Black Spider or the Spider Queen or whatever. That was a screw job. I do not believe Montreal was. Part of me doesn't believe Montreal was a screw job because uh, everybody benefited. The McMahon character grew, all that. And part of me is going to always believe 
Vince Russo was sent to WWF as Guerrilla Warfare, man. The he was sent there, WCW. He, he was sent there to nuke it, and I believe to this day, any bad thing he says about Vince McMahon, anything Vince McMahon says about him is all a work. Vince Russo got paid for destroying it, and whenever Vince bought WWE, he probably got a big pay bump on that, you know, paid off or whatever. And I think to this day, uh, they're keeping that on the down low. But I, I cannot believe that Vince Russo did so much good. Yes, I know he had the filter and everything, but you would think if over in WWF he had 100 ideas and only one of them stuck to the wall, but it was genius, then over here in WCW, whenever he had 10 million stupid ideas, you know, ideas, at least one of those you think would have stuck and been good. You know, they were other all, than, other they were all other, terrible. Yeah, other than David Arquette being the champion, that was genius, but Everything else, and I'm yeah. fucking kidding. Um, Finger poker else, doom was great. That was before him, man. Are you sure? Yes, that was January '99. That was like a week after uh, Starcade when Goldberg lost the belt to Kevin Nash. Okay, and uh, then the, they, they showed also, up that fall. They also did the Bash at the Beach with Jeff Jarrett and Hogan. That was definitely Bischoff. Yeah, that was 2000. That was yeah, so. 99, yeah. uh, like September of 99, Vince Russo and Ed Ferreira show up. Then a few months later, they get fired. A few months later, they come back with Eric. That's what leads to the Bash at the Beach shit. Uh, we need to just do a wrestling podcast, I think, because we got so much to say. A deep but, dive on WCW 2000. Yeah, <laughs> but 2000. I mean, yeah, I do believe. Um, we can call it the uh, LWO, LaRue World Order. There we go. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I do believe that, that, that Vince Russo was sent there to sabotage because, man, you said it yourself, Viagra on a pole. That even even that's even more cringy than Katie Vick would be later on, and that wasn't Vince Russo. It's more cringy than uh, what was the old lady's name that gave birth to a hand? May Young. Wanna, yeah, May Young. I didn't want to say the wrong wrestler, the one we were talking about earlier, the Spider Queen or whatever. But uh, fabulous Moolah. Yeah, I'm I'm kidding, but yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> Why? Okay, so the Viagra situation. What what was the stipulations like? What? Why did did they need Viagra? I Did guess Shane Douglas and Kidman need it or something. I honestly feel like that was to humiliate wrestlers on WCW. I mean, just what you know about Vince McMahon. Tell me this, like, clear your head, Alex and audience. What we know of Vince McMahon. Do you believe he is capable of sending someone to WCW like that to sabotage? And can you picture him watching Judy Bagwell on a pole, Viagra on a pole? Can you imagine him watching it and just? Man, like this is some good shit, but this is I'm sabotaging the living hell out of these guys. <laughs> yeah, what if what if Vince Russo was like, yo, uh, what does he say, uh, brother or whatever all the time? No, come on, bro. What's yeah, up, bro? bro? It's like, bro, I got a good idea, bro. You know, and Vince McMahon's like, what is it? And you're like, what the hell is it? It's Russo? gonna be a Judy Bagwell on a forklift, and Vince McMahon's like, no. And he's looking around the room at stuff, and he sees his bottle of you know Viagra, and he's all like. God damn it, put Viagra on a pole. That'll do it. He No, Vince McMahon, is. they look over to Vince McMahon, and he's counting how many Viagras he has left uh, compared to how many new paralegals have been hired. Oh, God. He's like, well, I got like 10 blue pills left, and there's 11 paralegals that have been hired. I'm in a real shitty situation. Somebody get puke in here. I got to talk to him about something. Hey, uh, one last thing on the Viagra on a pole match. Um, the only reason, the only way this match would make sense is if, like, Kidman or Shane Douglas got to use the Viagra on Tory Wilson at the end of the match if they won. Yeah, I don't understand, like, why wrestle in a match that's pretty much saying that you need Viagra. You know, you're, like, vital young men at this point. You're virile and, like, what were they, like, 30? Maybe? Uh, like, Kidman, was, Kidman was in his 20s, and I think Kidman was actually dating Tory Wilson in real life. And Me? Shane Douglas was fresh off his... Hot, hot, hot run as the Dean in WWF at the time. Oh, that was the, one of the best runs ever. Yeah, almost he, as good as Rocky Maivia's run was in the beginning. You know, yeah, Shane, almost as good. Shane Douglas got the IC strap because uh, Shawn Michaels just handed it to him. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I don't want this. It's like when he did it to the European belt or whatever they did. That was like, fuck funny. this. Fuck this. You can just have this belt. This is lower than the TV like, title from WCW. Take yeah, this, you know. I don't care. Shawn Michaels was the king of not losing belts. He was the king of forfeiting belts. 
His name is actually like Jeff Frost or something. They 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 had HBK on Young Rock, but they changed him into a. Uh, he was a African American wrestler, and he had like a injuries on crutches and everything. And he's like talking crap to Vince about The Rock. And The Rock says, out of respect, I'm not going to use his real name. And it was like, but you, it's obviously HBK. You know, it's the, the guy that had Vince's ear. Um, but before we move on past the story, what do you think, man? Do you, can you imagine Vince sabotaging WC? I know you don't believe that the Montreal could have been a work. But do you believe that it's possible Vince Russo was hired and him and Vince have an unspoken, you know, agreement about what happened? No. I, I think Vince is so focused on what he was doing that he didn't have time to like, I don't think Vince, I, I wouldn't put something like that past him, but I think Vince is like, his whole career is like, he never put anyone else over another company over. He wouldn't even mention another company. So like he was so focused on his own shit. That's where you're wrong though. I'm not trying to be, I'm, I, I, I agree with you. That is how Vince is. Everybody knows that. But the one thing, one of the one things probably more even more so than macho man hooking up with stephanie that got under his skin was finding out that bischoff had said stuff like we were going to put vince mcmahon out of business vince mcmahon was having meetings with the roster before their raws whenever they were losing and having pep talks and stuff talking about these guys want to put us out of business what are we going to do you know you go out so yeah usually i would agree he's laser focused on things and doesn't really think of other things but at the time it was personal to him that's one of the reasons I believe he might have just got fed up and he saw that they were finally winning and that over there on WCW, you know, the censors were hitting them hard. They were, you know, they were, they pretty, it was like a, it wasn't exactly a one-two punch, but they were on the ropes. And mm-hmm. I feel like, I feel like Vince Russo, who was at his peak in WWE at the time with the Attitude Era, was a horrible time to leave, goes over there and, and delivers, then he delivers, you know, the final uppercut or whatever. And uh, WCW's out for the count. That's why I believe it. Vince was taking it personal. But I also agree with you. He usually was laser focused. But you've heard that, right? That he was, you know, really taking it personal about trying to put him out of business and stuff. I've, I've heard both ends of the spectrum. But you know what I want to know? I want to know what the Slashaholics think. I think yes. they should come out. I think they should come out, uh, comment below and let us know what they think. Do you think that Vince Russo was a plant by Vince McMahon to destroy WCW? Or do you think like I do... Do you think Vince could care less and he was just trying to take care of his own business? Comment below. Let us know. Let us know. We might even do a poll, you know. And let us know if you think uh, a wrestling podcast on its own is something you would want to watch. And we might give that a try one day. Um, no, and, and besides the poll, like, we might do a Viagra on a poll. There you uh, go. Yeah, segment. Okay. It, today's, today's segment brought to you by 80stees.com is the Viagra on a poll. Brought, brought to you by Michael Clark. And Mikey, Mikey, I want to tell you something, man. ICP is one of my favorite bands. I am a diehard juggalo, and I love the fact that your name is Mikey Clark because that is like their mixer, their best friend, uh, one of the original members of the Inner City Posse and stuff. So I always like that. And uh, before I forget, because I keep forgetting Slashaholics, it might look like I'm on adrenaline tonight. But I actually got some very, very amazingly good medical news the other day. And I'm going to be sharing that on the channel. You might have already heard it by this point when this drops. But uh, thank you all for being supportive through everything. So, And you too, Alex. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, Josh, last wrestling story of the episode. This one's going to piss you off. So I almost didn't even want to put it in the show because you're going to be mad. Okay, what, what do we got? I'm, listen- I'm all ears. Roman Reigns has recently surpassed 100 days without a title defense. So we're going almost a third of a year without defending the World Heavyweight Championship once. You know what WWE has become? It's become a high-budget backyard wrestling show. And people are going to get pissed about that because all the talent that people have. But it's not just about high spots, people. Man, you can... Maybe not you, if you're a big current fan, people, anybody watching. um, But if you grew up watching the 80s and 90s, high spots were the, you know, you you, those were the moments that, if if for some reason the match wasn't carrying you very well and you were starting to get pulled away from it, those high spots is what brought you in, invested you in the story they were telling in the ring. 
DDTs that you see like 20 times in a match, if Jake the Snake got one of those on you back in the day, you're done. The match, the match is over. It's over. Uh, a fucking elbow by Dusty Rhodes, which I never liked. Uh, I liked Lex's forearm thing because of the metal plate and the heel. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I uh, WWE. I don't know what they're up to, man. 100 days without a title defense. It's like put the belt on someone else. You've invested way too much in. The, I know the Rock's your buddy and makes you a lot of money, and he bought your XFL from you, Vince, to bail you out. But Roman Reigns is not it, man. The fact that Cody Rhodes isn't the champion running the show, or the fact that um, Bray Wyatt was never, like, running the show. Even when he was champion, they, they bitched him out to Goldberg and ruined The Fiend. WWE is a backyard wrestling company with, like, a billion dollars to play with because all they do is imitate what they saw their favorite wrestlers doing in, like, the 90s and early 2000s, and it's all the high spots. There's never there's never holds. You, the only time you see reversals is if you get people like Finn ba- Balor and stuff in there, you know? I love a good chain Cody. match. Cody. Yeah, Cody too. Yeah, yes, definitely. AJ Cody. Styles, um, Bray Wyatt, he does holds. I was going to say psychology. the the Roman Reigns thing is kind of ridiculous because it's like I I I thought they wanted to put the belt on him instead of Leshner because he wasn't a part timer and now Roman Reigns is a part timer and I know that the bloodline and all this was like one of the hottest storylines they've had in years, but they've just yeah. milked. They've milked the shit out of it. It's like he's had the belt over a thousand days now. It's like, let's get the belt off of him and let's move on. They created a secondary world championship title and put it on Seth Rollins just so someone could defend the title. Wait, they put it on Seth Rollins? Seth Rollins has the secondary world heavyweight okay. championship. <laughs> so they're not learning from their mistakes. Okay, that's it's great. It's just, it's gross. They the just best need story, to get the belt off him. You're saying the best story in years, man. They're not even pulling the ratings that WCW Thunder was pulling. No, it's a different time. It's a different <clears> time. And also, I, I was going to say real quick, um, it's like right now SAG is having like a strike. So actors, writers, everybody's on strike. It's like The Rock still here. The Rock is doing nothing right now. So it's like, how can you, how could you not at least call him and be like, hey, why don't you come in and have a run and let's get the fucking belt off of your nephew or your cousin or whoever the hell he is and maybe headline a couple pay-per-views, be a transitional champ, and put it on somebody else. I mean, why couldn't you do, like, Roman Reigns says he's the tribal chief, The Rock comes in, he's the actual tribal chief, he takes the belt off of him, and then he loses the belt to somebody else. Let's do that. Exactly. You know, I did see the belt, finally, the new one that you're talking about. I did see a picture of it. I like that they kind of took the big, the round gold eagle, and mixed it with, like, the big gold belt, right? Mm -hmm. The big gold belt. I like that, but... I, want, I hope, like, Cody Rose does what he said and gets the winged eagle brought back or something or the big gold belt brought back. You don't have to change. And it all looks – that's the first belt they've made in years, Alex, that actually looked like they tried. That doesn't look cheap or, like I, – Identical. I to, They're all identical. I used to WWE. joke around. Remember what I – it would say WWE, and it's like, blue is for SmackDown, red W is for Raw. This guy's the champion of Raw because he's red, Josh. It gets yeah. on SmackDown blue. <laughs> and you know how you know how that gladiators always fought in tag team matches and never in singles? We're going to mm-hmm. put gladiators on the cha- tag team belts because, you know, that's, that's synonymous with uh, tag teams, right? Yeah, totally. It's gladiators. <laughs> Josh, um, let's let's get away from wrestling because you're you're mad, and let's get into horror. Okay, before we segue, and I will, I'm not going to drive the segue off the bridge. I promise. I still like wrestling. I I just can't. I tried. The females are doing a great job. They're amazing. It is the best generation of female workers. But before we moved on to horror, I just wanted to let you know that. Yours truly actually got invited to work on a independent wrestling show once a month. Uh, it would have started last month. Um, it's a group of guys that back whenever I ran my my last year in wrestling, I ran my own company. And I brought in like Jim the Emble Neidhart and stuff. I've shown those pictures. And uh, I let these guys come in with another guy I was booking out of Oklahoma, the state next to me. And they were rookies, but I would put them against each other and help train them. And I even made them a championship called, get this, uh, it was called the New Blood Championship, Okay. I also had another belt, the hardcore belt, and this was 2010. It was called the 24-7 title. 
no lie. And it was the same stipulations. So, uh, but no, I made them their own belt, new blood title. And after all these years, you know, I never even had a second thought about it. I was just trying to help out younger talent at the time. And they actually wrote me, uh, one of them did, who's running his own company now, and actually gave me a pretty long message thanking me for giving him the opportunity that, that I did back in the day. And he's actually went on, he's like got a really good physique and everything. Uh, he's went on to wrestle like dark matches and stuff for WWE. He's traveled uh, more states than I ever did. Uh, and he invited me to come work his shows. Um, sadly, I had to decline because uh, mm -hmm. of my health issues and my back problem. That's why I don't want because I broke my back wrestling. But I just want you to know it was a hard decision. Like I had to really, I mean, I tried to talk to my wife. Like, what if I'm just in tag matches and I don't bump? What if I just do a uh, hill manager? What if I'm, what if I'm the Eric Bischoff of the place, you know? No, because you're going to take a bump. It's going to happen. You love wrestling. You're going to take a bump. And she's right. I'm going to want to take a bump. So, um, man, it, it, was, it was a great feeling, though, to still be still, invited. Still flattering and yeah. pretty, pretty cool to know that the opportunity would be there if you wanted it. And you guys, if you watch the show, uh, thank you. Really appreciate the the offer, and I'm glad you guys are doing good. Um, Josh, did you know Chucky and Final Destination star Devin Sawa recently said that he would like to play Freddy Krueger in a reboot film? I can see that. I can see that. I can see him doing. It. I can see him or Kevin Bacon doing it. They uh, look similar. Can, they yeah, look I like can, yeah. I can also see. Um, Robert England's still doing it. Uh, yeah. we got, look, look at Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny and stuff like that. We've got the CGI capabilities. Uh, look what they did with Princess Leia. Remember that? Yeah. Like, she actually she, looked really good. Yeah. So. I think De – now, Devin Sawa's Freddy. I'm not really feeling that. I think that's cool that he, like, at least said he was interested because it just brings attention to the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise at least a little bit because we haven't had a – Nightmare movie since the the re or the remake. Yeah, hold on. I think it was. Yeah, let me. So it's been I a believe, while. Actually, I don't have I, I don't have to look it up. Uh, did 2010. Uh, I don't know. Okay, I, I, Jumpin' Jeff was it 2010? Yep, you win 2010. Yeah, it, just it'd be any, nice. To anything that brings attention to Nightmare on Elm Street is good. Um, do I want him to play Freddy? No, I don't. Um, but if he ended up playing Freddy, I'd still, I'd go, I'd buy a ticket and I'd go to the theater. How about that? There you go. I, yeah. I, would, I would check it out. I would at least do the ticket. Like you said. Does, and, so uh, Josh, would he pull his line from Casper? Would he in the dreams, the people he's about to kill, would he go up to the victim and be like, can I keep you bitch? <laughs> you know what? Screw this movie. Screw somebody else playing Freddy. Uh, you just said that line, and all I can picture is Freddy back in the makeup, and I want that too bad. You know, it's he, uh, Freddy, uh, Robert England back as Freddy, and it's possible, man. The time is right. If we had the money, I would totally pay uh, Bruce Campbell and Robert England triple what they're used to if they would do a version of this damn book I'm reading right now, minus the horrible sexing thing I just had to do. But Freddy versus Ash, man, that would be great. No Jason, just Freddy versus Ash, Necronomicon. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that would be badass. But uh, a Freddy prequel to or remake, like going back, you know, different Freddy. It's kind of like the uh, let's see here, the Wonka movie. The thing is just called Wonka, the prequel. Mm -hmm. It's like it's not necessary. Like we don't we. Everybody knows the origins of pretty much everything that's been remade at least once. Yeah. So let's let's stop doing the origins altogether and just jump in. There. If, now, if they got a different Freddy and just made a movie that was a sequel and it's just a recast, mm -hmm. that might be better. But I don't I don't want to see a reboot. Do you really want to see a reboot again? To no, I want to see a continuation of the of the original films, or I want to see them said. take off from part two, like we said in the previous episode. Um, my mind kind of jumped to a crazy spot when you were talking about how you, you had to, uh, narrate a Freddy Krueger sex scene. Yeah. I just, all of a sudden, and you said, no, Jason, no, Jason before that. I was just like, what would a <laughs> Freddy Jason orgy, uh, you narrating that, what would that look like? I don't know. Now, if Pinhead jumped in, down. then, 
If, if Pinhead jumped in, everybody would be getting nailed. Everybody. And there's the dad joke I promised at the beginning of the episode. No. And then the CD player Cenobite shows up, and then the chatterers in the corner just watching the whole thing go down. The, the cameraman. The cameraman Cenobite with the camera built into his face. <laughs> uh, with the news camera. And then the rodeo clowns in the barrel. Uh, that will, know, out, so. if, they, if they made a new Hellraiser, the new Cenobite would be the chat GPT Cenobite. Oh my god. They would look like yeah. the ones with no nipples or belly buttons. Yeah. Where yeah. the, the fucking clothes are coming out of their skin. Yeah. Josh, did you know, speaking of, uh, here's the next horror story. Speaking of Nightmare on Elm Street, Heather Langenkamp, today, it's her 58th birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah, happy birthday, Heather. Uh, she's actually interacted with my Twitter uh, a couple times, and I don't know if she's, uh, like, seen any of our stuff or is a fan of the channel, but here is the official... Uh, offer Heather, if you ever want to come on this channel and do anything, you tell us the time and the place, and we're there. Yep. Happy anytime. birthday! Anytime. Yeah, Happy thank- birthday! Yeah. I'll see you Friday. Take you out to eat. It's gonna be great. Happy I'll birthday! I'll do. If Heather, wh- wherever Heather wants to go to eat, we'll take her. Cheesecake Factory, whatever. Nothing's she's too actually, good. She was actually in the last Hellraiser movie they made, Judgment, which is she actually was the neighbor. Yeah, she was like the neighbor. Probably one of my favorites. It's such a small part, though. Such a small part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's uh she's had a really interesting career. She was in the Nightmare Club on Netflix, which was actually like a really high, highly rated yeah. interview show. Yeah. And Netflix did what they do to everything that I enjoy. They just canceled it out of nowhere. Because uh, they don't care, you know. They don't care shit. And, so thanks. In horror news, a quick tidbit since we're talking about uh, older horror actresses, who would you say? was a great horror actress from one of the classic horror Stephen King movies that kind of disappeared off the face of the earth for a while. Shelley Duvall. Shelley Duvall. She's back. She's actually filmed a new horror movie last year, and it's going to be uh, coming out. At the, it might already be out as we're talking, uh, like on streaming and stuff. But Shelley Duvall, who's had a lot of personal demons and personal problems, her uh, she was kind of Britney Spears a little bit back in the day, too. Um She's got a new horror movie, and I'm excited, and I'm proud that, you know, she's back on her feet and, and doing uh, movies again, especially a horror movie. That's going to be yeah, fun. I liked Shelley Duvall as a kid in anything, and I don't know if you remember right. this. Shelley Duvall had a kid's show. Do you remember this? She had, like, a kid's show. Um, it was almost like the Alice in Wonderland show that was on Disney, but it was, like, Shelley Duvall's something... And I remember watching, that's how I knew her. I didn't even know she was like in Popeye or The Shining or anything till later. Okay. Uh, I knew her from her kid's show and I knew her from uh, Suburban Commando. Like, I didn't know her from anything else. Man, which it's age- Yeah. It ages me. You can tell exactly how old I am by telling you Suburban Commando. Uh, you, want like, hey. about, you want to talk about aging, man? I was going to say, I'm, there's a few actors I'm proud of, like they're old friends and I'm like so happy to see them doing better. That mm-hmm. Shelly Duvall, Macaulay Culkin, dude, mm-hmm. he kicked ass with the Angry Video Game Nerd a couple years ago, and then yeah. he was on American Horror Story and kicked ass double, and uh, it's just, it's so great. Brendan Fraser, he's going to oh. be doing Mummy Part 4, and won he won the, the Academy Oscar. Award, dude. Academy like, Award, yeah, like, Academy it's amazing. Award. I'm so proud of these, of, of the, some of these celebrities that we grew up with. It's so cool to see them bouncing back. You know uh, who's next, then? You know who's next? Who's that? Corey Feldman. Academy Award winner, Corey Feldman. Let's get him back for a Jason sequel. Let it let it be a, a act like six, uh, five through uh, X or whatever happened in a different timeline, you know? And okay. let's let's do a, a 30 years later on part four, you know? He'll be, he'll be too busy. Uh, he'll be too busy with his Michael Jackson rock slash metal tribute band at a local minor league baseball park near you to to actually do something good uh plus the Corey's angels is a full-time job josh oh um, yeah and you know i got i got one last celebrity i know you're wanting to move on i just want to throw out that we're proud of and i think you are too uh ben savage is actually going to run for a seat in the uh california or in the united states house of representatives and he's, uh, his political party, which I'm not going to say what it is at all because I don't want to get into that, has always gotten that seat by a lot. So there's like a high, high chance Corey from Boy Meets World is going to be one of our United States representatives. That's just it's crazy. That is crazy. I saw – I speaking of Ben Savage, 
I saw a little bit of his uh, him running for it probably a couple months ago and of like what his platform was and him speaking. And I'm not making fun of him. It just he he didn't seem as polished yeah, as I need some work. Yeah. yeah, he seemed like he was uh, was kind of like he, he seemed nervous and he seemed like he was kind of like uh, word vomit. He was repeating the same answer in different okay. ways over and over again. I bet he'll get better. I mean, it's it's a new arena, but yeah. I, what I hope happens is if he does get elected, that uh, wherever he's at politically, whatever building he's at, I hopefully there's a hedge nearby, and Mr. Feeney lives on the other side of it, and he can ask for advice from yes. this. This is actually the Boy Meets World spinoff that we everybody wanted. Yeah, uh, Boy Corey, Meets White House. <laughs> yeah, Corey gets elected to political office, and Feeney follows him, of course. And uh, it's just Feeney giving him advice on political situations. Before he's gone, I really, really want to get a cameo from William um, to get his just want to like be like, give me a pep talk. You know, that's what I'm going through. I would love a Mr. Feeney pep talk Dude, just to have. I love that, and I'm gonna put that down as an earmark for potential birthday and Christmas gifts for you. Um, next here, here's a fun fact. I don't usually do this very often, but here's a fun fact for horror. Uh, the powder used to make the fire roar in the 1990s, uh, you know, kids show. Are you afraid of the dark on Nickelodeon? Can I guess it before you say yeah. it? Yeah. Coffee creamer. It was coffee mate. Coffee creamer. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Which coincidentally, uh, my grandma Helen, uh, made a lot of money, uh, from the Nickelodeon production of the show because I, growing up, I thought she was the only person who had coffee made in her house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so she must have been the main supplier. Yeah. And by the way, as we said before, I do not know the rundown. I don't know what we're going to talk about. That's that's what makes the show really fun is the uh, unexpected because I'm a, I, it's unexpected for me too. And he guess, never knows what the hell I'm going to say. No, I guessed Shelley Duvall when he when he asked earlier. Uh, last yeah. scary story of the episode, Josh. Mm-hmm. This is also going to piss you off. Okay. Scream, <laughs> Scream 7. 7 has officially oh been... I Scream 7. Scream 7, as you said it. Holy yeah. crap. Scream okay. 7 has officially been greenlit at Paramount. It's a thing. It's going to happen. It's it's 100% happening. What are and your so, thoughts, Josh? It's the same thoughts. Until, like, Stu is brought back as a surprise killer, or uh, Sydney becomes the killer, or even Gail. Gail or Sydney need to be the killer at this point. I know you're saying, well, they're strong women and survivors. Okay, you can't go through this so many times without it affecting you and, like, losing Dewey and all that. She's lost everything. So she might do it. Or if it was Sydney, just think how cool it would be to do, like, a flashback to Part 5 mm -hmm. when she's talking on the phone to Dewey or whatever and she's pushing the stroller. If the camera, like, panned around and there was no babies in the stroller, like, she's just going crazy. Or in the baby stroller, it's the ghost, ghost face. Back. Yes, or something like that. Yeah, and it's like, what? Yeah. And the reason, and my, my whole reason for why, like, her reveal at the end, they're going to be like, Sydney, how, why would you do this, you know? And she's all like, uh, she'll bring up J Randy. Randy was right. That's why. And, you know, like, putting the, you know, when they, like, wipe the blood, when they got the knife in their hand acting all nuts, you know? Randy was right. It's all, we've got to follow the rules of the movies, you know? And as long as the original cast is still alive, there's always a chance of a remake or a reboot. You know, like she finally goes crazy enough to know that to stop more killings from happening, she has to kill everybody uh, that's still there, like Gail or whatever. And it's like she's doing it. So the rule, like a reboot or remake can't be made. Like Randy would say, you got to know the rules of a reboot. You got to know the rules of a trilogy. So would that not be kind of cool that that's what drove her crazy? Uh, I, her, her her motive was Randy and trying to stop it from happening again. I don't know. May, maybe I I think it, by this point they need to go to space or they need to go to camp or yeah. go to school again or like go yeah go to a snowstorm. Um, we're we're approaching se part seven. This 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 reeks of a cash grab. I'm not a big fan of it, and they're they're churning them out way too fast yeah. at this point. What if, what if, what about like a one like it in, in the Antarctic or something like the thing, you know, in a base like I, that? I, I don't know. I, and also. On a cruise ship. What about on a cruise ship? Like a full one, not, not a Jason uh, takes Manhattan, but I'm talking Caribbean cruise, whatever, uh, whatever the big ones are now. I don't know. I don't do cruises, but like I'm talking stack, 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 full of hey, guests. I got an idea. I got an idea. Let's do a Jason X where Ghostface goes to space and they unthaw him. 
But since it's space and it's the future and Ghost Space is just a, a guy at this point, the start of the movie is like they unthaw him and the victim that he's chasing. And like instead of, uh, you know, instead of him like rejuvenating, uh, he's just dead. They, KM kills him in like two seconds. Yeah, it's just over. Yeah, it's like yeah, nanobots Jake, try to come over. It would, you know, nanobots would be cool if like they made like a metallic ghost face. That would Uber, be cool. U- Uber uh, ghost face. Yeah, Uber face. Uber, Uber. face. Uh, but, Josh, uh, what, oh, do you, go what ahead. do you think? I'm just saying, like, so that's your thoughts on it. Um, I just have no thoughts. I just, I don't want them to make it. It's ridiculous. I, it's the cash grab. It's like, it, I think they need to give it a break. Or do it where it's not connected to the other movies. Like, make them all different. Like, each different. You know, different stories, different locations. Ghost faces spreading. That's how Saw should do it. Like, people yeah. that have researched him are starting, like, all over the planet, you know, all over the... Every country has people that are like disciples of Saul, you know, in their own mind, and they're like doing it and carrying on. Ghostface could do that, but seven movies—it's just—it's nuts, man. It, they need to just cut ties with the old movies and keep it fresh. That's the only way. I think if we're going to look at it from a realistic point of view, before we get into the headlines of the episode, we're going to end horror right here. I think if you're going to look at Scream Seven from a realistic point of view. If these, the core four, the new people that have been through two films at this point and almost died in the previous two films, and Scream 6 is egregious in this. They, like, stab almost all of them to death. They're getting stabbed, like, 10, 11 times in living at this point. They have more superpowers than Ghostface. If you're going into Scream 7 with the same characters and they've been attacked and they've been stabbed this many times, these people would not put themselves in public situations with new people, new roommates, new whatever. They would be taking self-defense classes. They'd be carrying handguns. Yep. They would know martial arts. They wouldn't be, they'd probably get, they'd probably close themselves off from society. There and would that, be no part seven with these guys. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you could do what we were kind of talking about where I brainstormed out a cruise, you know, where like they all go on a cruise because everything's over. They want to go and relax, you know, and when they on the cruise ship, like and in heal. the ocean, huh? <laughs> and heal on the cruise ship from their 12 yeah. gut wounds from being you know, stabbed skip, over and over again. Skip a couple years ahead, but like they're on the cruise ship and all of a sudden it they anchor for the for something for a while, but it they're waiting for it to start moving again. It's not. They find out the entire crew, the captain, they're all dead. Communications have been destroyed. Uh, there's no, um, it can't move. They've destroyed the everything, the, the everything. And they're on yeah. this huge cruise ship, middle of the ocean, no way to contact the outside world. Ghost face goes on the hunt. Would that be fresh enough for you no, uh, for a movie? No. Okay. No. Hey. I'm talking hundreds of people. Like, you know, thousands of people on This it. is your Captain Ghostface, Ghostface speaking. <laughs> he could. He could talk to everybody. Yeah, let's, I mean, they're already going. <laughs> Anything's better than the last couple, in my opinion. I think at least it would be. They could They could even lean into the tongue-in-cheek campiness of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the Jason Takes Manhattan aspect. But it's different. It's not 16 or 20 students. It would be thousands of people stuck on this cruise ship with ghost i want ghostface versus carrie i want the new blood friday the 13th part seven i want new let's do it make it paranormal add the supernatural aspect to the series give it something new i think that's what that's what we're both screaming is yes make it something different let's do something different we don't even need the previous characters anymore at this point there you go um let's get into headlines to end the show josh let's do it okay now this one is is funny but it's sad um you're just making Kim, me mad and sad all night. Kim Jong Un, uh, he's the he's the dictator of uh, North Korea. Mm. He has issued a ban on suicide in North Korea. So anyone who attempts suicide and fails, so if you, if you tried to kill yourself or I tried to kill myself and we failed, the uh, punishment is death. Oh, wow! So he 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 issued a ban on suicide. So. He's basically helping these people. Am I yeah. wrong or right? On no, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Just act. If you want to die and you don't have the guts to do it yourself, act like you know, do something small. I couldn't finish it, and then you know they'll they'll do it for you. Yeah, I just saw that story, and I'm like, this is like ridiculous, and uh, like he's totally not helping the situation. It's like total. It's weird. I don't know. North Korea in general is just interesting. Um, I don't know. Just a weird, just a weird law. 
It is. That's 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 funny. He says it's treason against socialism. So. Okay. All okay. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Un. Yeah. Let's get into a little happier uh, headline. Okay. Finally. Josh and I's favorite place, McDonald's, has recently launched a two hundred and thirty-five dollar wedding package and a historic menu change. So McDonald's in Indonesia, Josh, will cater your wedding for two hundred and thirty-five dollars. The package includes a hundred chicken sandwiches and a hundred packs of four-piece chicken nuggets with options for additional services at extra costs. Uh, no word yet, Josh, on if sauce for the McNuggets is an extra cost. Uh, that could be. Could be a quarter, but you know what I really got to say about this is this, man. $235, are you kidding me? Are you kidding? When they, when they catered me, it was like thousands of dollars, like nothing you've ever seen before. Because of it, the onions, they had tears in their eyes. Wait a minute. Thousands. Did McDonald's cater Trump's inauguration? No, they catered to the White House for a big uh, meeting there. There's pictures of, like, stacks of Big Macs and him standing there smiling real big. Uh, he served Big Macs at the White House. That's my favorite part of Trump is that he's <laughs> like me. He liked McDonald's. Um, Wait a minute. So when Donald Trump, who was also in Richie Rich, wasn't he in the movie Richie Rich? Yeah. Okay, so when he was on set and he saw Macaulay Culkin had his own McDonald's, years later, he's like, he's in the White House and he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> he's like, it's going to be huge. It's going to be the biggest McDonald's, the best McDonald's in the White House ever. Like nothing you've ever seen before, man. Yeah. Nothing. Bigly. It's going to be bigly. Bigly, very bigly. I wonder if Grimace was part of his uh, political uh, cabinet on the inside. Oh, no, no, no. Me. Actually, actually, uh, Donnie was choking one time and everybody just mistaked him for Grimace. So oh, shit. that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I thought Trump was red and Grimace is purple. Well, he turned purple because he was choking. And no, Trump said, was hey, choking. Trump was choking on a Grimace shake. <laughs> and a piece of Grimace got caught in Trump's throat. Anybody's throat that drinks that, you're drinking Grimace. Just know that. <laughs> and uh, we're not getting political, folks. We're just ha we're having some fun. Just being um, funny. So what's the next headline, sir? Hey, this is, hey, next headline and last headline of the show. Wow. Time's okay. flew. Check, check this out. So the creators of South Park, Trey Stone, <laughs> Matt Parker, recently purchased uh, Casa Bonita, the Mexican restaurant with the cliff jumpers and they have a slide yeah. and all that stuff they have a really funny episode about cartman wanting to go to butter's birthday at casa bonita okay yeah. so they have decided to abolish tipping at casa bonita so before you get upset about that because josh i'm a server right now oh. and josh used to be a server uh, tipping's no longer allowed at casa bonita but they are paying every server thirty dollars an hour yeah that's the way that's what they do in in other country especially like england you don't tip it's an insult to tip you know a, a waiter or waitress over there so that's very cool of them and uh it's, i'm glad they're doing that that's legit um it's 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 like they're gonna make a lot of money uh servers will make a lot of money but at the same time it's like me personally like the harder you work the more tips you get so you can end up making way more than 30 dollars an hour yeah because people um, still might tip you right is that what you're saying no you can't get a tip at all no oh, tipping. Okay. Okay. It's, okay. You make thirty dollars an hour. So what I kind of think this is a great thing, on one end, but at the same time you're going to have the servers who are shitters, who are going to be lazy and because they're not motivated now to go the extra mile, and they're going to yeah. be like, well, I'm making thirty dollars an hour or whatever. Yeah, that's a good point. So so it yeah, is it's the younger like, generation. So who knows what's going to happen? But I'm really curious to see how it ends out. It's um, going to end like this. Rob Schneider, I can't do the voice from South Park. <laughs> Do, do Rob, Rob, Schneider. Rob Schneider is is a server. <laughs> is a server at Casa Bonita. It's Watch is Rob. It's not a movie. It's just it's not a trailer. Rob Schneider, it's just yeah. where he's fallen. <laughs> yeah, like after the last few movies he made uh, for Happy Madison, that's where he his career led him was to serving. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that because I'm a server too. Josh, in the show, buddy. Okay, first to be sure. Is it okay, Jumpin' Jeff? Can we end the show? Yep. Well, you heard it there, folks. The show's at an end, so be sure to check out the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash 80 slasher librarian on the screen somewhere. 
uh, in the description. Cameo, ten dollars. That's all you got. That's a very low price for amazing, amazing celebrities like me and Alex and the rest of the folks here at the Slash Tracks Network. Um, will you do five? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, check it out, and he's going to tell you about the email. What's the email? Repeat it again. Slash Tracks 2020 at gmail.com. Would you rather, uh, dear Slashy? Potential sponsorship offers. You just wanted to ask what my favorite color is. What's Josh's favorite color? Go ahead, email us at slash tracks 2020 gmail.com. We'll get back to you. And Josh, what else do you got to say before we wrap it up, bud? I, I thought we had a dear slashy, but if we did, we can catch it next time. Be sure yep. to turn them in, folks. Um, yeah, be excellent to each other. Good night and have a pleasant tomorrow. Say good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Mahalo, dog. You've got me mad now.